Hey everyone, today I want to come to you kind of with a new series that is the French you were taught versus the French that is actually spoken. So a lot of times there are huge discrepancies between what we're taught in school, university, uh, versus when you travel to the country, how people actually speak. That is something that I have encountered myself when I first moved to France. What I had learned previously had literally like almost nothing to do with how people were actually speaking, the words they were using all the time, like even the teachers at uni, I sometimes wouldn't understand the words they used because of course they were speaking also in a colloquial manner, that's normal. Everybody uses colloquial speech and a lot of times we abbreviate things in our native language so it's normal that you're not gonna understand every single word when you're first immersed in a French language. So that is something that i wanted to come up with to kind of you know uh give you guys both sides so you don't only have the textbook version of french but actually the version how it's used by most of its population who speak french so before we get into this video i want to let you guys know that we are opening up the language retreats for 2022 so you have all the new destinations on the website new as well as old destinations always make sure you follow me on instagram too because i announce the destinations there too so the instagram is lingo travels and also on my personal instagram miss urban eve and you can also check out all the information on the website also make sure you check out the FAQ for any additional questions and if after that you even have further questions you can always write an email so I'm super excited for this first retreat that is going to be a week in Paris we're obviously gonna have French lessons and then activities around Paris and also the south of France so you can either join us a week in Paris or a week in the south of France so the choice is up to you check out the available information on the website like I said Hope to see you on our next French retreat in August. Let's get started with the first one. First one is Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit simply means enjoy your meal in French. And this is how most textbooks would um, teach it. Bon Appetit. Enjoy your meal. You can say Bon Appetit. That's fine. But most people in a colloquial setting would most probably say Bon App. Bon App. Bon app simply means bon appetit. It's abbreviated. So shorten bon app. It's just enjoy. So the next one is je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas is what you most probably learned in your French lesson, but je ne sais pas, nobody really says that. People would rather say je sais pas. Je sais pas. Je sais pas. So they leave the ne out and they do that with a lot of other situations as well where the negation is ne pas but they simply leave the ne, the first part of the negation out and just use the pas. So je sais pas, I'm not coming, je viens pas, je vais pas, I'm not going. In a lot of situations, people would just use the pas instead of the ne. So the ne is very formal, that's how you learn French, but that's not how people speak French. So let's get to the next yeah. one. This one you could consider slang flat out. People use those phrases like all the time when you're in France. People of all spheres say that um, and that is faire chier, faire chier, um, faire chier or chiant. So faire chier means to piss off. It's colloquial language. Um, it's also kind of like a little bit vulgar but not really, it's not that vulgar because everybody uses it. Um, so faire chier means to piss off because literally like chier means to sh literally. So faire chier, faire means to do. So you make someone <laughs> that's the literal translation. You're getting on the nerves, like really getting on their nerves. You're pissing somebody off. So that's like to fais chier, for example, you're pissing me off, tu me fais chier. Or um, il fait trop chier. Like, um, he's so annoying, il fait chier. Or, il est chiant, il est chiant is the same thing. Is um, the adjective, il est chiant, means also like, he's, he's annoying, he's annoying. He pisses people off, il est chiant. Faire chier, to piss off. 
And the next one is ne t'inquiète pas. Ne t'inquiète pas means do not worry, don't worry. Ne t'inquiète pas is mostly also abbreviated when it's just an everyday speech, colloquial speech. Then people would uh, rather say t'inquiète, t'inquiète. Like let's say a friend uh, picks you up from somewhere. You're like, thank you so much, merci beaucoup. And the friend is just like, t'inquiète, don't worry, like no worries. T'inquiète. And another one is un truc de ouf, un truc de ouf. Um, that is also something that you will hear quite often. And that is also a phrase I already mentioned in one of my previous French slang videos that you can check out here. Un truc de ouf simply means um, it's crazy. That's a crazy thing. It's something crazy. C'est un truc de ouf. C'est ouf. It's crazy. Okay. Un truc is a thing, but it's also colloquial. This word, I remember when I first um, got into university in France, the like one of my professors, she would always use this word. She would always say, I had this linguistics class and she would always use like un truc, un truc. She would always say truc. And I'm like, what does truc mean? Like, cause this is not something that I learned in my French classes. So truc is, um, yeah, just a colloquial way of saying a thing. Une chose is the normal, normal, uh, the formal way in French, how you say a thing in French. Une chose, une chose. However, most people would say un truc. Truc is the colloquial way of saying a thing, une chose. So I would never understand what truc meant until I asked someone, I think, or I looked it up or something like that. And that's when I found out, oh my God, trick means a thing. Okay. So that's when I, like it hit me. So those are like situations that I went through myself. That's why I find it very useful to also give you those kinds of um, words and, and language and uh, sentences so that you're not like completely thrown off guard um when people say those to you or when you hear people say these things so that you kind of like know what they mean the next one is also kind of like uh, what i um previously said with do not worry it's um the same translation don't worry um, it can also be translated as no worries so that one is pas de souci souci means worries so no worries pas de souci but um i or i gave it away already people would not say pas de souci Souci, but they would rather say pat souci, pat souci. So you almost don't hear the e in de, de, pas de souci. So nobody would say it like that, you know, um, enunciated like that. So you can clearly understand what they're saying. But people speak fast in everyday life. People don't have time to enunciate every single letter of a word. So they shorten words and they do that in every language, really in English as well. So people would say, pat souci, pat souci, pat souci. So that's how you would hear it. Pat souci instead of pat de souci. Okay. Um, so this one is c'est nul. C'est nul means simply that sucks in French, but C'est nul literally means it's zero. Nul is a zero. And um, when you say c'est nul, that means it sucks. C'est nul. Another one that is also very colloquial is petit en câble. Petit en câble means to literally like to freak out. He freaked out, but not just like a little bit, but like really angry. So that you can say, um, il a petit en câble. Il a petit en câble. So he f totally freaked out. And another colloquial way of saying um, it's disgusting is c'est dégueu. So you would usually have learned c'est dégueulasse. Dégueulasse means disgusting in French. But most people would just say in a colloquial setting, like just in an everyday speech, like people would say c'est dégueu. C'est dégueu. It's disgusting. C'est dégueu. So they shorten the dégueulasse. They leave it out, the less, the uh, ending of the word basically. And just say the first part of the word and that is c'est dégueu. C'est dégueu. Um, oh la la, c'est dégueu. 
Like, wow, that's disgusting. Okay, so those were the words. I hope you guys like this kind of series. So write me down in the comments if you have any other words or expressions or things that you might not understand and you might want me to um, include also in the next video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.